This video is a recording from the Men Improvement Podcast, brought to you by menprovement.com, the number one self improvement resource strictly for men. Go there today to see all podcasts, improve yourself as a man, and get access to three free ebooks, including one that will help you triple your testosterone naturally. Thank you and enjoy. Ready to take your life to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Get all the information you need to be better, improve everything, and live life like a pro. This is the Men Improvement Podcast with Sean Russell. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Men Improvement Podcast, the podcast that is dedicated to helping you become a better man. I'm your host, Sean Russell, and today I have a pretty awesome show for you today. Our guest is Kezia Noble of Kezia-Noble.com, and she is the world's leading female dating expert for men. And when I tell you this, I am not kidding. She is a smoking hot 10. So the reason I brought her on the show was A, to get inside the mind of a beautiful woman and see what they're thinking and how they really feel about being approached by guys and what really knocks them off their feet. And B, to get her to dish out all her best tips and secrets for how any man can meet and attract even the most beautiful woman. Now, this podcast was really amazing. I had a great time doing it, and I myself learned so much throughout it. So I definitely think you're going to enjoy it. It's not the best audio we've ever had. We had some difficulty. My mic was uh, turned up a little high. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. But it's definitely listenable and it's definitely worth it. Make sure you listen all the way to the end because she gives some amazing, amazing advice that you can literally go out and start using today. But before we jump into it, I just want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Combatant Gentlemen. Now, what Combatant Gentlemen is, is an online menswear company whose mission is to help guys dress smarter and cheaper. What's unique about them is that they actually raise their own sheep and plant their own cotton. So they have zero middlemen and control every aspect of their production. They do this so that they can offer the highest quality clothes at unbeatable prices. And I mean unbeatable. You can get a 100% Italian wool suit for $160 and it's beautiful. Nobody else could offer these kind of prices because nobody else raises their own sheep and plants their own cotton. They all have middlemen. They all have to up their prices or else they would go out of business. Check out CombatGent.com and really start to enhance your wardrobe without destroying your budget. And if you use the code MENPROVEMENT at checkout, you're going to get a free tie with any purchase. These guys are unbeatable. Check them out. So without further ado, here is my interview with Kezia Noble the world's leading female pickup coach. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm here with Kazia Noble from kazia-noble.com. She is the world's leading female dating expert for men. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Kazia. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I I love what you do and your job title as the world's leading female dating expert for men is incredible. How did you become this person? It all started back in 2006 when I was approached in a nightclub by a pickup artist. I had no idea what that even was, but this pickup artist is quite well known. He has his, and still does actually, have his own company teaching men how to pick up women, which is not something that I do so much now. His stuff is a little bit more gamey. Um, So I've moved away from that. But anyway, back to the story. He... Uh, approached me and he told me that he was running boot camps and he wanted some wing girls or some women there just giving feedback on the lines that the guys were experimenting with, the students. So I was like, you know, I'm kind of a curious person. I thought, oh, okay, I said, listen, I warn you though, I'm very, very direct and I'm very, very honest and some of your customers might not appreciate that. Well, actually, he then saw the potential in that. He was like, no, you definitely have to come now. So I went there. I was my usual honest, direct self, and as I was getting my coat to leave, thinking, well, I'm not going to be invited here again, I realized that there was a queue of guys waiting to to talk to me after the boot camp with more questions because they said they'd never had a woman just be so honest and give such direct insights into the female mind with 
you know, with no ball at all. It's just completely on on the money truth. So um, they invited me to work for them as one of their head instructors and news travels fast, thanks to the internet, about what I was doing for guys and helping them to achieve. And um, I realized there was no honest female advice in this market, in this community. It was women just giving, I don't know, I found very, very vague dating advice, such as just be yourself, smile more. And I thought, no, this is making guys into the nice guy. You've got to make them into the amazing guy or the bad guy, but not the nice guy. Anyway, so as I said, news traveled fast and um, I got a book deal. And then I launched my own company of my own instructors, my own boot camps, my seven day mastery course and my own line of products. And since then, it's just gone from strength to strength. Touch wood. Oh, that's uh, uh, it's incredible. And so essentially you teach guys to not meet women in a pickup artist way, but kind of be more natural and essentially teach them how to become attractive to even the most beautiful women. Exactly. And I'm not having a go at pickup artists, but since the game and since mystery and you know this is by the way mystery i have a lot of respect for so i'm not here to tarnish anyone's name at all and i've met the guy fantastic guy um but things have evolved since then it's not a case of just using routines anymore people want something which is a lot more organic and more congruent with who they are they want to learn natural game they don't want to just have a few pickup routines so that's what I mean when I say I don't teach pickup stuff. It means not pickup routines. I teach something which is just a little bit more holistic, I would say, but still gets very powerful results, if not more so. Yeah, I find that to be the most um, important thing as well. I, I actually have worked with the guys from daygame.com a lot, mm -hmm. and I know you know them, and I've been doing learning with their through their products how to meet women myself and then teaching men how to do it on my end would you say that what you teach is pretty much similar to that or is it different uh day game i do i do know of them i i i used to work with one of them back in a long time ago in uh the the previous company and um the problem with them is it's limited to daytime mm -hmm. um i teach daytime Time, night time, sexual escalation, um, even a little bit on relationship game, believe it or not, which is a new thing, which I'm pretty good at. I just surprised myself. But yeah, I, would, I don't really know their work, so I can't comment. But if you think it's natural, then yeah, I guess I guess it is on, on the same level. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I definitely want to jump into what you teach and everything, but I want I have a bunch of questions here. I actually have some user questions as well from readers. I told them I was going to be interviewing you, and they emailed me in what they wanted to ask. So we'll do about 10 to 15 minutes, and I'll try to get inside your mind on a lot of questions that I would love to have answered by a beautiful woman. So we'll do that, if you don't mind, and then we'll jump into how you teach guys to be more attractive to women. Is that cool? That's yeah, awesome. All right, so I'm really curious. I don't know if you guys know what Kezia looks like, but if you don't, you should Google her, check out her YouTube channel because she is a very beautiful woman. And I'm really curious to how many times during the average day do you actually get hit on and approached by guys who don't really know who you are? Uh, okay, barely, barely ever. I'll explain why. I get a lot of guys checking me out. I get guys staring at me. I get guys looking at me. But actually guys approaching me, not a lot. And that goes to my beautiful friends also. And that goes for my less attractive friends. Um, men are dazzled by beauty. I'm not saying I'm beautiful. Other people have said that. I could do it to be a few inches taller, uh, quite personally. Um, but yeah, I don't, I get looked at a lot. And a lot of beautiful women say, you know, guys are just looking at us, but not approaching us because they're dazzled. And when they see a beautiful woman, all these things come into their heads, such as, you know, she's going to be, she's going to have a rich boyfriend. Uh, she likes older men. That's a big one. Um, she's going to be high maintenance. She's going to be difficult, bitchy. She probably comes with baggage. People come up with all these reasons not to talk to a beautiful woman. So the first thing that I teach my students is how to use mind management 
techniques to manage those limiting beliefs. Remember, she's always a five and you're always a 10. I always tell them they have to approach a situation like that. If she really is a 10, you're a 12. Because that's the only way to slay those nerves. The moment you look at a woman and you find, you start entertaining your mind with these excuses, that's when you've already convinced yourself. That's when the negative pattern already begins and you'll just find that the negative pattern flows and flows and flows until you've created just a wall between you and that woman. So even if you do go and approach her, it's just got a very negative energy force around it. Yeah, I, de I definitely know what you mean by that. Getting in my head was one of my big problems. And it's it's definitely, it's hard to overcome. I'm like, you know, it's very daunting. Are there any other tips you have to be for guys to be able to like adopt that mindset and truly believe it that they're the 10 and she's the five when they're overwhelmed by this girl? Oh, absolutely. I have got loads of techniques for guys to get over approach anxiety. Um, what I do, for instance, on my seven day course, what I used to do when I was a rookie, when I was starting out, is we did get guys results, but I would spend two days just helping them overcome their initial nerves. I'd use NLP techniques. I would give them exposure therapy uh, exercises, desensitization exercises, which I can go into more detail later on. And what would happen is after two days, of just getting out of their comfort zone and actually doing it and feeling the fear, yes, the approach anxiety would wear off. However, what would happen on the third day is the approach anxiety would come back. And I thought, this is very interesting. Why is it coming back like on the third day, just as they got rid of it? It's because they then found, they discovered what is essentially most guys' biggest sticking point, which is running out of things to say. It's huge. Mm, yeah. It's massive. Mm, I mean, yeah. I have a conversation skills uh, DVD set, which has sold thousands and thousands because guys realize that this is the base of the interaction. So what I do now is simultaneously I work on their conversation skills because when you become a master conversationalist, when you understand conversation witchcraft, and I do call it conversation witchcraft because it is that powerful, it, ne you, it will never ever leave you in that state of decision-making paralysis where you don't know what to talk about, which fuels the um, initial anxiety that you feel. You see, anyone who's a master conversationist, yeah, they might get a bit of adrenaline or a little bit of nerves when they approach somebody but not enough to hold them back because they know that they can connect with that person they can inspire that person they can challenge that person they can do all sorts of fantastic intricate things with their conversation skills so you're never left in that awful kind of no man's land with nothing to say so you have to work simultaneously on yes overcoming physically physically overcoming that approach anxiety by actually going and doing it and getting out of your comfort zone but at the same time you have to know you can't kid yourself you have to genuinely know that you can hold a conversation with anyone it doesn't matter what age they are what background they're from what culture they're from regardless you can hold a conversation and it can be a fantastic conversation that will grab their attention force them out of the and it will make you the woman's main priority in under one minute that's powerful yeah that's really powerful and you mentioned that you had some nlp techniques or other style techniques, are there any that you could adequately explain over an audio that guys could go out and start using? Of course. Now, I'm not an NLP practitioner. I do have an NLP practitioner on my team called Rebecca, who's probably the most beautiful NLP practitioner in the world. Um, but what I do know is that anchoring, um, anchoring certain words to emotions to certain emotions can have a great it can make excuse me it can make a big impact it can create that shift in your perception of the situation so for instance instead of saying i'm nervous or i have anxiety you replace that with i have approach adrenaline approach excitement if you think about it anchoring is something 
that has been taught to us since we were very, very young children. Now, when we were nervous, like maybe we we're going to do a school show or I don't know, we we're going to do an exam when we were little kids, could be a piano exam, whatever it was, you know, when we used to feel really nervous, our stomach would be like in knots, yeah, and it would be really tight. Mm -hmm. and we'd feel sick and we'd go to our parents or our teacher and go you know I feel terrible what is this feeling and they go it's just butterflies and they were very clever because that was a way to calm us down because butterflies is for most people unless they have a phobia which is out there do have a positive association with butterflies so um rather than telling a kid the truth which is oh you're really nervous and your stomach muscles are going into spasms right now <laughs> they say it's just butterflies and we still use it when someone says are you nervous when we want to take control of the situation what do we say it's just butterflies yeah so we actually use this all the time but if you become aware of it it becomes super powerful it's a great um it's a great skill set to have so when you look at a beautiful woman well, I'm saying, oh, I feel fear, I feel anxiety. Say, this is excitement. Mm. I'm turned on. When you see yeah. a beautiful woman, it's yeah. much, much better to embrace the fact that you are on some level sexually aroused by the woman. A lot of guys think, oh, no, 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 I don't want to sound creepy. But that's a lot more empowering than saying, I'm nervous. It's an alpha trait. If you look at alpha men, they look at women sexually. They do. And women don't think they're creepy. You know, they look at a woman, they look at her in a way which means, you know, I'm horny, I'm turned on, that woman's body does it for me. That's what's going on in his head. He's not thinking, what do I say? Oh, she's so beautiful. Or, or um, you know, I, I feel so nervous, I'm struggling here. He doesn't use those negative um, descriptions. He uses something much more positive that puts him in charge, not her. Yeah, no, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. So, um, yeah, anchoring is, is my big thing. Um, but I, I don't, I, as I said, I wouldn't go into any more detail than that. I'm much more about exercises, doing mm -hmm. uh, desensitization exercises and exposure therapy based exercises, depending on the person. Some people work better with exposure and some people work better with desensitization. Yeah. And I, I really like that, that one tip that you gave essentially framing nerves that you would into kind of excitement and arousal and if you guys want to learn more about all Katia's different techniques and what she teaches like she said she runs boot camps all over the world and you can go to her website and she teaches you all about this stuff but I want to jump on to the next question which is you said that you don't often get hit on do you and your friends do you guys like to be hit on during the day is it can it be annoying when guys come up to you if you're shopping in the mall and yeah. stop you okay one thing um i missed out was that i get and this is for your american listeners i get approached a lot more in america than in europe europe is slightly more conservative than america socially awkward socially conservative mm -hmm. so um just allow me to go back to that point Americans have a lot more social confidence, especially in Los Angeles. <laughs> they have a lot yeah. of social confidence because usually they're trying to find someone that can, you know, maybe further their career somewhere. That's a mass stereotype. I'm sorry. I don't want to offend anyone from no, LA. It's, it's probably <laughs> accurate. You know, I actually haven't been to LA, like I told you earlier, but yeah, from what I hear, it's, it's a lot more open than it is even here in New York. Yes. Oh, very much so. Um, which is actually quite funny because in our LA boot camps, um, I always say to them, listen, the girls are much more sociable here, but it's a false sense of comfort. Whereas in Europe, we have to work a lot harder with the approach of actually getting into the sets. But I do get approached a lot more in America. So I was referring more to, to England. England, there's a more of an issue with British guys with approach anxiety and social awkwardness. But I will try and keep this a little bit more for your i'm sure most of your listeners are american so i'm gonna mm -hmm. go into that zone a little bit more okay do i get annoyed with it yes we get very very annoyed of guys approaching us when they are wasting our time okay if a guy approaches you well then that initial oh god someone's coming up to me can quickly turn around very very quickly if those guys know what they're doing very quickly it can turn around to 
always got my attention. And now he's become my main focus and eating this ice cream or lining up and, you know, in Starbucks getting my coffee has become, uh, has taken second place very, very quickly. So it's very, very, very important when you're approaching women in the daytime to get those few moments right. You have more um, flexibility in the evening to get things wrong. You don't have a lot, but you have more than you do in the daytime, especially if the girl is walking in a shopping mall. I do prefer being approached in shopping malls, and I do encourage my students to approach in shopping malls rather than in the street. Um, but yes, the initial feeling is, oh God, someone's talking to me and I don't feel like talking because I'd rather be on Facebook on my iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if he can get it right in the first few seconds, then it, it doesn't matter if it's daytime or nighttime. All right. Yeah. So when you say if you can get it right, describe, describe that. Like what, what would make a guy come up to you and you think like, oh God, here we go again. And then totally flip that to being like, wow, like I'm really intrigued here. What, what does that guy typically do? Well, when someone's got no purpose to, the, to their conversation, there's no game plan, there's no structure, you, you can usually feel it. You think, okay, mm -hmm. this person, you've got to think, look, what have I got to offer this woman right now that's more important than her Starbucks coffee? And a lot of guys get caught up in this and think oh but I'm a really interesting person and I'm a really successful person and if only she got to know me then it'd be absolutely fine so it's her fault because she hasn't got the patience to get to know how wonderful I am bullshit oh excuse me am I allowed to, to yeah, swear no, go ahead okay well that's bullshit okay because right now right now it comes down to the fact that you are completely Competing with a Starbucks coffee. Yes, it does come down to that. And you can be the most amazing, you can be James Bond, 007. She doesn't know that. So you have to get your character, your sense of purpose as a man, right across very, very quickly without obviously telling her, hey, I'm a fabulous person, come get to know me. So what I like, first of all, is I like to work out if the person prefers to do direct or indirect. I find direct is better for daytime. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of a, a lot of men prefer indirect. That's fine. But let's stick with direct. If a guy is going to go indirect, I always like the first line to be, "This is so random." I love that line yeah. because random's good. Random's exciting. You know, the woman wants to be able to say that she met her boyfriend like at Starbucks or in a bookstore. I mean, there's a romantic connotation to that more than I met him in a dirty nightclub when I was sweating and, and drinking alcohol and drunk. Mm -hmm. And that's most people meet each other. I met him online. And that's like got to be the worst story that they, they're going to share with their female friends. Like this guy came up to me in Starbucks and, you know, it's just, I don't know. Next thing I know, I'm having a coffee with him. And next thing I know it, you know, we're meeting up on a date. So this is so random shows her look I'm, I don't do this usually so I'm not the creepy mall guy um, this is so random it adds surprise and it's like we're both in the same boat together because this is random for you and this is random for me so this is so random but I feel compelled to tell you something I like the word compelled because it breaks patterns um, yeah. I'm all about pattern breaking I believe everything to do with game is two things pattern breaking and be able, and being able to perceive a negative as a potential positive when you get those two things i mean you're done you know if you understand them and you can you can appreciate how important those two factors are you're 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 there um so i felt compelled it it's a little bit i think this is based on hypnosis that's a hypnotist actually told me i use natural hypnosis or something like I'm a natural at it yeah. it's, it's all about pack breaking and getting people out of um, their autopilot mode and, and almost temporarily confusing them and I never knew I but I, I've done this all my life so I picked the word I felt compelled to tell you something and then it's a stop and she's like what now why why do I want her to say what because it gets used to her being curious and asking you questions I like to force the person to start asking me questions. I like to get, it, it changes the pattern because if you're doing all the work, 
then you're setting the tone for the rest of the interaction. Yeah. So, so is that what, like, as opposed to going up and saying, Hey, I just saw you and I felt compelled to come over here and tell you, you look very beautiful. You know, you, you're doing everything all at once. Exactly. It's not, it's not fun. You know, yeah. we, we, we want to be curious. It's like a trailer. Uh, it's like an introduction. It's like the intro to an amazing song, right? Mm -hmm. We all love the intro because we be like, Oh, what's coming? What's coming? So, um, she goes, what? And just go, with a detailed compliment like you look fabulous you look great when guys say that to me i just go thank you because there's nothing i can comment back on it oh you look great too that's not going to happen even if he does women are very unlikely to say that back so i always say listen guys women want to feel special they don't want to be idolized they want to feel special that is the operative word here they want to feel like the compliment is bespoke and tailor made for them. Mm -hmm. If you give them a vague compliment, it means that you haven't had time to really appreciate their, their particular type of beauty. You haven't appreciated the effort that they've put into their look. If you say you've got beautiful eyes, good. Uh, write a thank you letter to my, my mum and dad. If I'm, if you like the fact that she's tall or petite, again, G uh, it's, it's genetics write, write a write a thank you letter to her parents it's better to pick something that she's worked at so i always like something like you look like a modern day audrey hepburn or you look like a modern day marilyn monroe something like this because it always makes it always forces a reaction from the girl whereas you look fantastic it doesn't feel detailed enough for her to give it any any credibility any value so i always say and it also again this goes back to another pattern breaker she didn't expect it yeah. or i like the way and it can be something quite obscure and quite witty and funny so i like the way that you wait for your starbucks coffee and she's like oh you're such a joker like you know she'll start <laughs> laughing like that's the most ridiculous thing i've heard and and you can say is isn't that the most ridiculous thing you've heard? But it's really quite sexy. And you're kind of like got a smile on your face because it's personal amusement and it's funny. And it's like you're already on this private joke together. So I've had my students say, I, I love the fact that you're the most beautiful alien I've seen. <laughs> like, it's like, what alien? Yeah. Oh, you're not. Oh, right. Okay. And and it becomes like a personal joke. You You can practice all these on throwaway sets. Girls you're not interested in just to work out what suits you and how far you can take your humor. Some guys, like if you look at Russell Brand, he takes his humor to another dimension. And have you noticed how people just follow him? Even people who don't find his particular uh, sense of humor funny, they can't help but just follow him like the Pied Piper of Hamlin. They can't stop themselves because it's such an unapologetic, this is my humor and you're coming on a trip with me. So if a guy can get it to that level, then fantastic. But most guys can't take it to that extent. But if they can work out where it is that they can take it to, then for the sets that they're more interested in, they'll know their limitations for now, anyhow. Yeah, that's I totally agree. Russell Brand is is magnetic. And that's kind of like the ideal way to act around women. From your experience teaching guys so often, would you say that even the most shy guys that they can learn that this is a skill over time to, that they can develop? I don't tell, okay. I don't call them shy guys. I call them introverted guys mm -hmm. because I think introverted guys can be extremely sexy. Um, I personally have always been drawn to exhibitionists, but I have dated introverts who get it right. They get the whole introverted thing, right? They're not, but what they do is they project a different kind of value. Theirs is, look, they, they're a fantastic, interesting person, but you earn, has to earn his right. And she has to earn his, um, she has to earn his, his value. Is that, is that the word or his permission to actually yeah. find out more about him? Like Johnny Depp, mm -hmm. that's an introvert. That's a typical introvert that women fall for. Um, James Bond, a lot of the James Bonds were introverts. Uh, 
such as the timid timothy dalton portrayal of a james bond and even sean connery was actually an introvert a lot of people think he wasn't he was an extrovert but they were introverts they were very dark and they kept their cards close to them whereas um you know, roger moore and uh, pierce brosnan were much more exhibitionists there's just something small there that i noticed um so yeah with with the introverts um i would say that they have got to go out and practice just like everyone else they can't use the fact oh i'm quiet and i'm shy as a way to not go out and practice like everyone else because sometimes they'll find that they can actually go quite far um and they don't realize it to actually do it yeah no i I agree, and it's good to hear because I'm, I was always an introvert myself, and I, I can t I tell everyone here all the time that I was able to get over that just by pure exposure, you know, just repetition, doing it, approaching, 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 and it does help, and I still have that, that sense of uh, approach anxiety, but hopefully with some of the tips that uh, you've shared here today, I'll be able to work on that even more. You'll, you'll probably never, ever be the life and soul of party mm -hmm. uh, you'll, you'll probably always be the guy who takes a step back likes to listen to other people likes to observe but as long as your game and your structure and your techniques is congruent with that then you can be just as attractive and as successful with women as the ex extroverts out there yeah absolutely i totally agree i i actually find it to be somewhat of a, an advantage because i'm a big thinker and like you said, I can take a step back, calculate a little bit, not stay in my head, and then proceed while a lot of times extroverts are just acting without thinking. But if you can if you can kind of get over that that point and you can combine the two, that's what I find has been in the last three months has made me very effective. And here's a good question. Mm -hmm. Game is so important. I know, but how important are is everything else like look, style, height, money in comparison to game? Okay, let me get this in perspective for you. Okay, I have uh, students from all over the world attend my events, and I've taught thousands and thousands of guys. I have had handsome guys. I've had unattractive guys, physically unattractive. I've had very, very wealthy, powerful guys. Also, very, very big, big players in Wall Street. Um, I have had funny guys. I have had young men, older men, black, white. And regardless of their attributes that they have, they're still on my course. So mm -hmm. being handsome, being successful, being funny, well-traveled, rich, are attractive qualities for most people but they're not the attraction formula. It's a bit like looking at a beautiful woman, you know, that stunning five foot 11 blonde. And you look at her and you're like, wow, you know, that's, that's my wife. And then she opens her mouth and she has a, I don't know, for instance, like a real like Brooklyn accent. And I'm not offending anyone from Brooklyn, but some people are like, whoa, no, I, <laughs> no, that's too, that's not what I expected. And it can break a whole, it can shatter a whole illusion. She might be, you know, chewing gum. She might be dumb. And the guy's just completely turned off. Yeah, she's beautiful, but he doesn't see the beauty as much anymore. Mm -hmm. So there's attractive qualities. And then there's the attraction formula. And that's why there's so many men out there who are not good looking, who are not particularly successful, that are getting all the hot women. The problem is when you go and ask these guys, which we call naturals, look, you know, you're five foot four, you're bald, you've got no money. Why, why do you have all these women around you? How do you do it? He'll say to you, well, just be yourself. Just say some jokes, smile. And you're like, gee, thanks. Um, what I do is I break it down what the naturals do. I break it down in a step-by-step -step format and pass it on. I go back to my ex boyfriends who were all naturals but yet if you lined them up and interviewed them you wouldn't be able to see any correlation you'd be like uh, this guy's a drug dealer and this one is a religious person and and this one's tall and this one's short where's the correlation kez 
Um, and the truth is that they just had the attraction formula. They mm -hmm. had game. Game is about having a structure, a goal plan. Um, what most guys do is they talk to a woman and they just freestyle it and they hope they get lucky. And when they do get lucky and someone says, hey, you know, how did you get that hot woman the other night? They'll say, oh, we just clicked. Okay, the problem with just clicking is that you can't copy and paste that and get the same results. It's a case of luck. Maybe yeah, you were in a yeah. good mood that day. She was on a level. Maybe has a couple of drinks, music. I don't know. You're in a, you know, you're at a time of your life, both of you, where you were looking for someone. It could be a multitude of things, and you have to just keep on relying on external factors to guide you towards the woman of your dreams. And it's great when it happens, but maybe it will come to a point when you're 38 and your friends are all married, and it's not so easy anymore. So what I teach guys is how to create structure and a game plan um, within their interactions you see women this is wh where women excel women never say I got lucky they're much much more um, strategic when it comes to seduction a woman will get her man she will get him and I've seen how women are they can get obsessed they're like I will get him one way or another I will get that <laughs> guy and nine times out of ten they will get they will get the guy that they want. They'll use everything. They'll use every trick. They'll become someone else if they have to for a month. They'll do everything. They've got a game plan. Whereas guys, it's much more, I just want to freestyle it. I just want to ad lib, see how it goes. You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, whatever. No, having a game plan will actually, and having some sort of bedrock, some sort of blueprint will really, really increase your chances of getting the woman that you desire. And I created something called a five phase format that really, really helps guys to keep their game strategic without the woman realizing. It looks like he's just a natural. The first one is making impact. Second one is pattern breaking. Third one is connection. Fourth one is attraction spikes. And the fifth one is the close. And if the guy has that structure in place when he's starting out, You'll find it a lot easier to um, add routines and sound bites and anything else that he wants to do because the structure is there, the bedrock is there, the foundation supporting everything is in place. And you'll find that he's just, it makes things a lot easier. It stops you drifting and getting lost in space during an interaction and letting it fizzle out and just going, oh, well, I'll go to the drunk chick instead today. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's uh, that's actually very interesting because I, like I told you, I've been I've been doing a lot of this stuff for the last three to six months, and a lot of what I've learned from various people, whether it be Day Game or the guys from RSD, mm. has been, you know, start out with a little bit of structure, so mm -hmm. you can you start to gain some confidence, but then start to you know just go into a conversation and kind of improv it based on confidence and everything, and. I think I definitely would benefit from a little bit more structure like you were just talking about because I find that that has been a problem of mine that things will just fizzle out. Sometimes I'll take a left turn and I haven't been getting consistent results. So do you think for like five minutes you can just go over a little bit of detail of each one of your steps there that you just talked about? Uh, to go into the... Uh, I know. it's If it's too much, then... See, it's like each yeah. one deserves half an hour. Okay, so. yeah. You know, I want to be able to do it justice. Let me touch on. Let me touch on a, a, a point in in the five phase format, which which um, actually just strengthens what you said just now, because mm -hmm. you touched on something very important. You said so. There's something that you said, which is um, you don't know whether to turn left or to turn right. This usually happens around the two transition points in an interaction. There's the first transition point, which is from introduction to the comfort stage. And when I say comfort stage, it means keeping her full attention and having a great conversation with her, really connecting. And the second transition stage, which is um, the transition from, you know, having a platonic, amazing conversation to something more sexual. It's, a, it's a, effectively the sexual escalation stage from comfort to seduction. Yeah. yeah. So let's look at the last part of the comfort stage, which is the third phase 
format, the third phase in the format, which is connection. So when you've made a connection with a woman and you've got past the bitchy kind of routines and you've got past the fake eyelashes and the persona that she wears when she goes out and you're actually talking to her, you're actually in the friend zone. And this is where people panic. They start going, oh my God, you know, there's nothing going on here. And, and I, I don't know, maybe I should just leave it here and then arrange a date and then, then maybe try and you know, kiss her or sexually escalate. But if you realize that the friend zone, if you get into the friend zone within 20 minutes, that's actually amazing, okay? That means that you have gone, you've become her main priority, you've got her full attention, you've broken all those patterns, you've made a deep connection. So the friend zone is a benchmark in this particular scenario. The difference is you don't want to get friends locked, okay? There's a big difference between friend zone and friends locked. People get mm -hmm. friends locked because they don't apply phase four and phase five. They don't apply attraction spikes, sexual tension accelerators. They don't know whether to turn left or right because there's no structure. So they get stuck in this kind of really amazing conversation and they think, you know what, I'm not going to sabotage it. I'll, I'll end it there and we'll just swap numbers. The problem with that is it can end up friends locked for a long time. So that's why having structure is so important. So when I say to guys, look, you've made a connection, she's interested in you, but she's not sexually interested in you yet. That's your role as a man to either extract it from her if she is, or to actually bring the idea to her mind. So I'll then use things such as, you know, I just realized why I like you. I know, I know the reason now why I'm attracted to you. And that's and rather than saying, hey, I'm really attracted to you, you finally found the reason why you're attracted to her. So you're letting her know that you are attracted, but in a way which plays with her curiosity again. And then she's like, why? So there's already much more positive than her reacting by going, oh, um, hmm, <laughs> I didn't realize you were going to say that. So both, I know what it is that I'm, why I'm attracted to you now. She wants to know about herself. And then you can say anything you want. You can say it's the fact you can use a physical compliment. It's because you keep doing this with your mouth. Or you can say to her something about her energy, her spirit, about you know her passion for life or the fact that, you know why I, I know why I'm attracted to you now. Why? Because you're a drama queen and I'm attracted to them. It can be something which usually people criticize her about, but you find really sexy. Anything. But it's now slowly making that transition away from the friend zone. And if you know how to apply attraction spikes, verbal and nonverbal, and sexual tension accelerators, you know how to flirt, then you'll never, ever get frightened again. You'll never have that fear of rejection. You'll never be outcome dependent because you know how to do it. Remember, she, if she's attracted to you, you need to extract the attraction to the surface. And if she's not yet attracted to you, it's because you haven't allowed her to be attracted to you. You've done nothing that's sexy. You've done nothing that has provoked her imagination. You've just been a great person to talk to. And women are quite happy to say, I'll leave it as that. I'll just have another person that's fantastic to talk to and another friend to add to my list. It's your duty as a man to actually change the dynamics and you can only do that if you know how and you have a structure otherwise you'll end up lost in space and just stuck in in the friend zone which is friends locked i hope that explains um adds strength to my conviction uh <laughs> yeah, no, that structure absolutely it really it really does like just hearing you say that was amazing because i think that's the point where i've been stuck in the last few weeks in interactions is that escalation to a little bit of uh yeah sexuality and making that connection and you just saying that right there i can see how that could work so easily during my interactions i think it's really going to take me to the next level and just listening to everything that you had to say today was so refreshing and i never really i always knew about you and what you did but i never got too deep into your 
your teachings, but I think that after today, that's that's definitely going to change. And I think that anyone listening, if you're more interested in what Kezia teaches, you can head to her website, kezia-noble.com, and she's got an incredible YouTube channel. She's got a blog. She does boot camps. She's got books. And why, why am I talking? What else do you have? Why don't you tell everyone where else they can find you and what you have going on? Okay, so um, I'm based in London, um, and most of my boot camps are now in Europe, actually, rather than America. But that's why I have quite a portfolio of products that I've put together for people that can't get to London. I have products such as Attraction to Seduction, which cover more the sexual escalation side of things, seducing women, getting women into bed, um, and overcoming last minute resistance that's a big one by the way and i had to cover that in the dvds um i look at conversation structure 10 hook lead system deep connection uh i have ebooks on online dating how to make it work for you rather than let it go against you if you do choose online dating text game so once you get the number turning it into a date I have the Maximum Impact DVD. I've got loads of DVDs. If you look through the products section of my website, you'll be able to find the DVD set that suits you, suits what you want. Or you can get the bundle pack, with, the bundle pack which is a huge discount if you choose that. Um, then I have my seven-day mastery course, which takes place in London, which is a bespoke, tailor-made seven-day experience, which is a life-changing event. And if you go on the page for the seven-day mastery course, you'll find all the video testimonials there. And uh, yeah, uh, you can check out a lot of the articles. I write for Men's Fitness. I write for the Huffington Post. So you can stay connected that way. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter and my Facebook fan page. Yeah, well, that's that's great, and it's been a pleasure having you here. I learned so much. I'm sure everyone else did, and I wish you the best of luck with everything else that you have going on. Oh, thank you, and uh, I've really, really enjoyed answering those questions. They're, they're really good questions, and it's quite advanced, some of the stuff that I've shared with your listeners, and I just hope that it benefits them and uh, they get a lot out of those solutions. I definitely, I definitely think they will. So this has been awesome. And guys, you can find any links to anything that we talked about here in the show notes at menprovement.com slash MPP010. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day. Thanks for listening to the Men Improvement Podcast with Sean Russell. Get more episodes, more tips, and download our free self-improvement ebooks at www.menprovement.com.